You can come out now. It was a lot of O. James and a lot of big, what I call, cow eyes, just looking up adoringly at him. James! Aren't we a little overdressed, good night? I mean, it's obviously tongue-in-cheek. I, I don't see, I think there's been a lot of, you know, feminist uproar about the way women are portrayed in Bond, but I think it's fun. Agent Triple X, calling Agent Triple X. You will report to headquarters immediately. Almost all the girls in the movies, they're double agents and they're not always what they seem, and I just thought that was always imbuing the girls with some depth. This is Triple X. Message received and understood. I love a sexy woman with a gun and in a bikini and high heels. And this idea of strength and beauty and being dangerous. Who are you? James, you must be good. Well, naturally. But behind every good bond, there's been some outstanding women. And none more so than the unforgettable Ursula Anderson, the very first film Doctor No. When she emerged from the sea, it sent the sails of bikinis soaring. And as for male pulses, well, I think you can guess. Ursula Andress was the first, and I suppose because I was so impressionable so young, I thought she was. It didn't get better than that. When you think of a Bond girl, we're all thinking of, of Ursula. She looks as a woman ought to look. You know, you can understand Bond perking up his interest as he peers out and suddenly sees this apparition coming at him. It really looked like she belonged in the sea, like she was another creature. She wasn't the creature of this earth. It was as if she just came out of the sea and was born dripping wet. I mean, it was highly erotic, even to me, when I was, you know, seven years old. <laughs> Ursula Andrews couldn't speak English anyway, so her lines, her speaking lines are dubbed, as is her singing. Underneath the mango tree, me honey and me. Underneath the mango tree. I think a lot of people remember me for Bless This House as Sid James' wife. But I don't think people remember me as a singer. Underneath the mango tree. When I did the voice, I was singing as I felt she would sing if she could sing. La, la, da, dee, da. Oh, I'm very proud of that scene, even if I'm not seen in the scene. I'm very, very proud of it. Underneath the mango tree, my honey and me. Who is that? She was, for me, sort of the sexiest thing I'd ever seen. She was wearing a bikini, and I know it's hard for you to understand this, but not many women wore bikinis in 1962. All right. I'm not supposed to be here either. I take it you're not. Are you alone? What are you doing here? Looking for shells? No. I'm just looking. Ursula doing anything at that time was terrific. Getting up out of bed and uh, getting off the grass. Stay where you are. Having lunch, you look great. I promise I won't steal your shells. I promise you, you won't either. Stay where you are. I can assure you my intentions are strictly honorable. I think it was one of the first times that you saw a, a woman who was really beautiful who looked like they could handle, you know, take on any trouble. Now that was an amazing image. I've, I've never, um, I mean, no one's ever forgotten. Why the honey rider coming out of the sea scene is so sexy is, uh, is all to do with the suggestion. What's your name? Rider. Rider what? Honey Rider. Her name is Honey, suggestion, Rider, further suggestion, and on top of all that, nothing they could have ever planned. Uh, the actress is Ursula Andress, which sounds like undress. So it's all loaded in there, and that's why we all find it so sexy. How do you beat that? Find out after the break as the best ever bond comes to an all too premature end. I do hope you've made your choices carefully. They will turn out to be your last.
Welcome back to Best Ever Bond for some of the most memorable moments from 40 years, 19 films and five James Bonds. That's a Scotsman, an Irishman, a Welshman, an Australian and me, an Englishman. What an explosive combination. The hardest thing on any movie nowadays is to come up with some original sequence and more so the original opening sequence for a Bond. It's, it's nightmare time. <laughs> There's been 19 bonds, and you know, you've got to compete against that huge heritage that you inherit, and that's as hard as anything. So, you've got to have new ideas and outdo what the previous bonds have done. Stop! You didn't finish! And at number two, the longest pre title sequence in Bond history it's the heart stopping speedboat chase down the Thames from The World Is Not Enough. The boat chase is extraordinary, or made more extraordinary to an English audience because it's all the bits that you know about. You know, if you live in London, you're going, oh, my God, they're there! You know, it's just like... Ah! And what's amazing is when you do a Bond film, however preposterous your requests are, people just seem to melt in front of you. Thames Authority were very helpful and closed the River Delbra. The biggest problem on the Thames, when all was said and done, actually, was the House of Parliament. <laughs> they didn't like us going by early in the morning. I know Jack Straw did go in and say what a great boost it was, the English economy, Bond, and they went easy on us after that. The sequence on the Thames was great to do because I could actually do it. Because I can drive motorboats and like the water and water sports. So it was good to do, to be able to be physically in there. hammering along and when what you see is just so real you're seeing it hit in the face with a bucket of dirty old Thames water it takes his breath away but it you know, carries on. The real stunt driving was done by a girl called Sarah Donahue who was absolutely incredible. She races power boats and she was blonde but we wigged her up. A really very very talented driver. At the end of the day, the Sunseeker is a family boat. It's a boat for cruising at, at 30 miles an hour. It's not meant to charge down the Thames, do a full lock, 180 degrees, come back in itself, smash through piers. You know, it's not meant for that. For the, the actual pier shot, and they said you don't need to go at full tilt, only sort of half, three-quarter speed, get to it. You only need to get close to it, and it'll, it'll smash because it's a breakaway pier. But one of the stump guys, his final word to me were, smash it. <laughs> so I thought, oh, go on then. <laughs> There's nothing better than smashing something and not getting a bill for it. <laughs> The funniest thing for me is when he goes underwater and straightens his tie underwater, you know, which wasn't on the paper, that was one of Pierce's things. You know, they're dragging him through this tank in Pinewood and he has the idea of straightening his tie. Which, you know, you have to reflect in the music as well. The clamp was my idea. I always like having little, little moments the audience can and relieve the pressure. Knowing everybody dislikes clampers, especially this particular one. They told me a play, I can't be a roll off myself. They were very vague at the start to tell me exactly what was going to happen to me. And he was sort of saying to me, now what sort of reaction would you like when, when the water comes over me? I said, I'd just act naturally, I think it'd be OK. He was just so relaxed, he thought he was going to get some splashes on him, you know. <laughs> boat just came right at the side of the water and the water just lifted me and I was I was mesmerized I had no idea where I was a pile of mash uh, and they, they thought it was great everybody was cheering clapping it's, it's funny even thinking about it now but yeah it was perfect 